Hi there, I'm Kate St. George, the manager of Cream City Yarn, and this is how to make a Fair Isle hat. This is the last class I will be teaching on this subject. It is how to do the top of the hat with the decreases, and how to close the hat, and then I will show you how to block the hat. Then you'll be able to wear it, and you've done it. You've knit a hat in a week, maybe less. Who knows how fast you're watching these videos. Uh, I'll show you my hat. It's right here. It's coming along nicely. I really like the colors. They're very springy. Um, I probably will knit another one. This was a lot of fun. Maybe a more fall colored palette on my next one. I've been seeing some really, really pretty ones with the back. The background is dark and that has been something that I think I might have to knit. I, um, I loved teaching you guys and this was very fun. So maybe I'll do another class again for online tutorials. And if you have any questions or you want to visit me, uh, when, when the world opens back up, I'll be at Cream City Yarn and we can go over doing color work. Like maybe you want to tackle a sweater next time. This is Skoga Fall by, um, Diana Walla, which is a beautiful sweater. I love it. It's out of Lopi, which is an Icelandic wool. We can go into that too. Uh, so we're going to get started now with the top of the hat and I will do a different view so you can see my hands. Now we've moved on to chart C. We will be using this chart for the top of the hat. Uh, there are a couple of interesting things to note here. While we will continue changing our colors, our colors on the side like we have been doing for the rest of the hat, there are two interesting little points. This is a knit two together spot right here and we're gonna repeat it a lot so your hat's gonna suddenly get much smaller. And then you're going to move on to these little Vs which are the knit two together, oh, slipped, slip one, knit two together, pass the slip stitch over which I will show you how to do. That will be a central decrease. It will decrease two stitches at a time rather than just one. We should be done at the top of the hat, so grab your drying needle and let's get decreasing. I am ready to start chart C. It's a little tricky because it starts off right away with a knit two together in, this, in a different color than your main color, which is a double tricky, but it's not that bad. I will walk you through it. So we are gonna knit two together by taking these two stitches right here and knitting them together. I like to start by getting my needle in there and then attaching my purple yarn. And just, oh, let me get my finger situated. I'm gonna knit. There we go. And I'm going to reset up my hands. And we're gonna knit five. So that involves a catch too. So one, two, I think five is too long. If you don't think five is too long for your float, that's fine. Just leave it long. But I'm going to show you how to catch it just one more time. So bring my yarn forward, wrap around, bring my yarn back, catch. All right, and now I'm going to do another knit two together. doing this. Catch. And knit two together. We are about to start our clever little decrease. We are going to work in color work all the way up to right before the decrease here. So your last uh, stitch will be, mine will be purple. Then we're going to work the slip one, knit two together and pass the slip stitch over in purple because that's what the little um, triangle box is in. So that means that's the color we are working it in. And then we're going to knit another purple. So it's going to seem like a very large glob of purple. And if you look at the picture at the top of the hat, it's the the star point going in. It's very clever how we hide our decreases in there. I just wanted to highlight that as we were gonna go into it with this next decrease because it really makes the top of the hat. If you don't do it right, you'll definitely notice. 
The other thing I want to point out, which I know a lot of beginner chart knitters don't recognize, is this this area right here. There's nothing in there. There's no no graph, no anything. These are the stitches we are taking away. So we don't worry about the spaces in between. That just means that every time we work this, our hat is getting smaller and the stitches that are left are on this side, this side, and the decrease. Um, it's important to know about this because it changes in different charts. And when you see something that says no stitch on a chart, sometimes they do it that way, or this chart where there is just nothing there at all, that means that your stitches are gone. And because we're decreasing two at a time, you can see that it decreases on both sides. It's a really clear way to show that you have no stitches there. Okay, so we are going to get started with the decrease. I'm starting with my first two color, rounds of color work here and here. There was an interesting thing that happened on the second round of color work. Did you catch it? You were doing groups of three where they looked like this with the solid color, then the background color, and the solid color again here, or contrast color if I'm saying it correctly. And then there was sections where it had these three bumps of solid color. That's where our decreases are going to be located. So I've already set up for this. I've gotten all the way around to my first decrease. I will knit the last stitch in purple before the decrease. And then keeping purple, I'm going to slip the next stitch off, knit the next two together, and pass the slip stitch that I slipped first over the first, the second stitch. So it makes this little triangle on my needles. Because I'm going slow, it split my yarn which is okay see how I just put that back on now I've got this pretty little stitch here another purple and I'll work to this the next grouping of stitches where I'm going to do a decrease I'll do that next decrease one-handed so you can see if you're dropping your stitches what it looks like. Hopefully throughout this hat you've gotten faster at reading the chart and working in color work. I know I have. Every time I do one, I get faster. All right, we're up to our next decrease. If I was doing this one-handed, let me switch my, I would select my purple, slip my first stitch off, knit the next two together, and then take my first slip stitch I slipped and pull it over the second one and knit the next purple stitch. And that gives me a very nice decrease. See, it's not so bad. You can do it too. I have finished enough rounds of my decreases that I can no longer work on my 16 inch circular needles. Um, for me, that means I'm moving to Magic Loop, which I'm going to demonstrate here. But if you are uncomfortable with the, with Magic Loop, I suggest double pointed needles to do to finish the top of the hat. If you are uncomfortable or haven't tried double pointed needles, I will uh, put a link in the bottom of the the show the the video notes so you can watch that if you want to learn how to double pointed needle use double pointed needles. Um, I'm going to start with Magic Loop. So what I do is because I no longer need this, I take it off. However, I like to put a reminder of where my beginner is, beginning is, so I just kind of hook it right there. That way I know which side's my beginning, just in case I put it down and walk away and get confused. Um, then I'm going to start knitting across here and then split it onto my long 32 inch size three needle. So it's the same size, it's just got a longer cord, which I'm going to bend in half for magic loop. Um, I also will split my decreases 
at the chart because then I know it'll be contained and there won't be kind of funny, funny decreases that I have to deal with later. So I'm going to start by knitting onto my longer needle. So this is my, my longer needle here. And staying in pattern across the chart. The top part of a hat is my favorite part of the hat because it always ends up like a star or some kind of cool pattern. I think they're just pretty. So because this has three, well, it's a six pointed star. I'm going to do three chart repeats on one side and three chart repeats on the other. And as you can see, I'm catching my pink on this middle stitch because there are five whites in the row. That was the second repeat. And there's also another way of decreasing where you, or of knitting on smaller circumferences with two needles, two circular needles as opposed to DPNs. Whatever way gets the job done and makes you comfortable is the way I want you to do it. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and tell you you need to do it certain ways. Knitting should make you happy. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of my chart and that half of my needles or half of my stitches are on this needle. The next thing I'm going to do is pull this until the, I see the other end of the needle, which is over here. And I'm going to flip it over. And I'm gonna pull this back. That was just to show you. Normally I wouldn't do that big of a, a pull, but if you're new to this. So now I'm gonna start working in magic loop. You get this loop here and you fold it in half. And now I'm gonna be working with my cord folded in half. And I'm back into the chart. Nothing has changed there. Same kind of knitting going on. But now I've got this little rabbit ear here. Still catching my floats. And as you can see, my 16 inches coming off and I won't need that anymore in a second. I like working on Magic Loop for color work because it keeps my stitches more even and I don't get these like gaps. So usually with double point needles, I get gaps in between where my needles change and I I don't like that so I I have gravitated to this method of knitting smaller circumferences for a long time I do it on my sleeves I do it on socks mittens you name it it's always magic loop for me plus I have small humans in my house and they are gonna steal those DPNs that's just that's asking for trouble Right, so 
So back around and get rid of my 16s. And now I have the two tips of my long needle. And it's folded across halfway on this. So I've got this here. Everything's contained right here. You can't go anywhere. If it if this gets pulled out like this, oh no. You just re-split it back where you originally had it split and pull the cord back out. No big deal. To start the next row, I simply get myself, I call this starting position for a magic loop. I don't know what other people call it, but your needle with the yarn attached to it goes to the back and your needle that you're going to use comes to the front and it involves flipping. So on the other side, you do the same thing. You just flip it. Then I push the needle that I'm going to use into the work and ready to work it. And then I pull the, the needle with the tails out and get ready to knit my next round. I know this is a really brief explanation of Magic Loop and I will again provide another slow-mo video in the, in the links if I can find it. Otherwise, a better tutorial about Magic Loop in the links. Um, I will be back when we close up the hat and then I will show you how to weave in ends after that and block. I've just finished the last round of the top of my hat. So my decreases are all done. I snipped it for ease of videoing, but you could snip yours now. I've snipped both of my tails, probably about 10 inches, eight inches, somewhere in there. And I've got my last bit of decreases there. So to finish off this hat, I like to take both tails from my last two colors so they're nice and strong and then just take the stitches off from my needle pearl wise so I don't miss one because the last thing you want is to miss one and have it just run all the way down your knitting. Whee! So nice and tight. Flip it. Go to the other side. Get these side, this side off. Pull it through, nice and tight pretty that looks. And then I take everything and I stuff it down the center. And then we flip it inside out. Now I will spend probably the next hour putting all these tails into my work so you don't see them anymore. Um, it can be, so you don't tie knots. That's something you never do in knitting. I mean, it can be simple as just kind of running your needle through the inside floats. I like to give myself a little bit of extra tail just in case it ever comes loose or I need to take it out. Probably never, but you never know. So I make my, my last two stitches really obvious in my hat. The other ones I'll take more care to, to hide, but the last two I always do pretty obviously. We snip close, but not in the fabric. And when we block it, it'll kind of mush into the, the other yarn will felt in. And now we begin the arduous task of, of putting the tails in. I like to use a really sharp needle for those singular threads. And then I sort of follow, follow the yarn nice and sharp.
see how that is and then I snip and I do that for every single tail that's in here so I'm going to spend the next probably hour of my life doing this I'm really proud that I finished my hat and I'm sure you are just as proud as I am I'm going to then block it, which I will video for you guys so you know what blocking means because some people don't know what blocking means and that's okay. That You're learning how to knit and not all the terms are, are known for everybody. So I'll show you how blocking goes and when you're done, you're done. I will see you in a little bit. The last step that I need to do is called blocking. Um, I prefer to use wool soap with lanolin especially if it's a color work project that I use non-superwash wool for. The lanolin helps rehydrate the wool and keep it nice and soft. Um, to use this bar soap, because many of you are used to soak, I just take my mildly warm water and rub the soap in the bowl. See how it gets kind of white? Once it's sufficiently white, put it back here, and take my hat, which I've woven in all the ends, and I submerge it in the water. Now I'm going to let that sit for 15 minutes to a half hour, letting it get all the water into it and letting all the fibers relax and it sort of fills in the color work. So we'll see the end result. Once I let it sit, um, I'm going to roll it up in a towel and let it dry overnight. My hat has been soaking for about a half hour. Um, to remove it for the next step, I'm going to pull it out of the water. And I'm doing this one handed, so it's not gonna be perfect. But... Try and get as much water out before I get it into the towel. There's no need to rinse, really. It has a ton of water in it. It's very heavy. And then I lay it out on my towel. You can already see how the colors have kind of gotten softer. All my edges are less sharp in my color work. And then roll it up. Normally, I would put it on my floor and step on it and get it as water-free as possible, but this works too. Now, if you want your hat to be more rounded, you can, you can finish drying it over a... Um, over a bowl. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. If you want it to be more like a flat hat, you can just let it lay until it's fully dry. Whatever way you lay it, it will stay like that once it's fully dry. Um, kind of like wet hair and curlers, that, that'll set it. If you, you can always wash it again and change the size of it and the direction of it if you want. I hope you enjoyed these videos. I'm so glad we were able to finish our hat. It turned out really great. And thank you for joining Cream City Yarn in a free class. If you have any questions, please let us know. I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you did too. And I hope you have a great night. Thanks. Bye.